Hey everybody, George Fennell, Steel Shield Technologies, Weapon Shield. This is our third video. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the grease. Grease is like the most misunderstood substance out there when it comes to lubrication and weapon care. I know a lot of people um, use the grease on their Glocks, uh, on their Diamondbacks, quite uh, quite a lot of weaponry that it seems to function very well on and under the right conditions. But from a lubrication engineer's standpoint, let me tell you about the grease, why I designed it the way I did and what it was intended to be used for, just so you're better informed and maybe it can help you make better use of the grease as well. As a lithium complex goes, weapon shield is the top of the line. There is no better grease out there. I will guarantee that. Um, I've always said that I will put my products where my mouth is. Anytime anybody uses or buys our products, uses them and feels that they aren't the best products in the world, I'll refund your money and your shipping. And I, you know, ironically, I've never had to do that because that's how well we perform. We are the best. But when it comes to greases, the best greases that you can find in usage outside of you know specialty greases like high temps that um, you have to use a full synthetic bentone grease and stuff like that for use around uh, casters and furnaces and the steel mills they, you know it's like the best general use grease is a lithium complex now the difference between a lithium and a lithium complex is the complex which is the additives straight lithium and it has a fair performance record. It will get oil and hold oil in a place that you need it. And that's where Greece came from. The ancient Greeks, they developed it. They used to mix animal fat with oils in order to hold oil into areas and places where you couldn't normally keep it. Uh, we see today some of the big old trucks. Uh, we used to have a 72 auto car many, many years ago that had bath bearings where you would put oil in there and they would just, you know, that was actually the best lubrication you could get. But, you know, as vehicles progress and we have cars, we can't really use bath bearings on cars. It's not only costly, it's kind of like way over the top. So what we go, we go with sealed bearings with grease and the grease, grease is basically 80% of the grease is, is oil and the rest is thickener and additives. So, when it comes to lithium complex, we build that lithium grease into a super lithium grease by using advanced additive technologies in the grease itself, which are anti-wear agents, which are um, surface performing and surface spread reagents, things like that. Uh, you can look it up and check it out. There's lots of information on grease. But grease can give you problems. That's the thing I've always been concerned about. When I designed it, uh, John Garand, who everybody's familiar with the M1 rifle, the M1A, uh, the Garand or Garand rifle, the M1 Garand, um, that was the most popular rifle at the end of uh, World War II as well as the Korean War up until Vietnam when they introduced the M16. But uh, General Patton even said the greatest contribution to warfare ever was the M1 Garand rifle. So. That was designed by John Garand in order to incorporate grease into the trapdoor housing. A good example um, that we use on a commercial basis and private citizens use is the Mini 14 or the Mini 30 um, by Ruger. Uh, exact same copy on a scaled down version. The trapdoor, the bolt that rolls and locks on the top has a, uh, a guide on it that has a channel and that's uh, the way he designed that is it's called to be lubricated with grease. So with that in mind, that's one reason we developed it. Grease can give you these problems that I speak of when it gets cold or if you're in an extremely dusty, dirty environment. Grease is a magnet for garbage. I mean, it will pick up just about anything that you've got out there. Uh, in the way of contaminants, whether it's burnt powder, it'll suck it up. Uh, if you've got a, a highly dusty, uh, very dusty or highly dirty environment, it's going to pick it up and hold on to it. This stuff 
can kind of be abrasive too, this dirt and, and, and can work itself in there. So you've got to be careful. If you're shooting every day and it's working for you using grease, say on your Glock or on whatever gun you're using it on, most shooters like to use it, you know, on the, on the slide in the frame. Uh, they feel that the grease gives them a feeling of an added buffer of protection on there. It's an illusion, I guarantee you, because oil is better. Weapon shield is better, 100% better, uh, and over the top. But if it's working for you, fine. I'm not going to argue with people that like it. But remember, in cold temperatures, grease has what's called, in liquids, it's viscosity. In grease, it's a rheological thixotropy. And that thixotropy or viscosity in grease, that's, that's kind of how you deal with it in a lubrication engineering sense. Um, of, of a semi-solid, which grease is. It has solids mixed in with oil, so you have basically, you might feel like there's a buffer there, but that buffer can give you problems. When the temperature drops, viscosity goes up, and that grease can quickly turn into a nightmare for cycling in very cold weather. Um, if you have grease on your, on your weapon and you hit temperatures that are close to zero or below zero, it's going to slow your cycling down because the thickness or the viscosity of that grease just went through the ceiling from what it was and almost it'll turn into a solid. It can actually lock your weapon up under the most extreme conditions. So be very careful uh, of how you're using that grease under the temperatures that you're using. If it's hot outside, you should be all right. If you're a low dust environment, you should be okay. If you've been using it successfully, continue because I'm sure you'll learn. If you have to move into an environment uh, that basically it's going to be very cold. I mean, a lot of us, USPSA, IDPA, compete through the winter months in some of the coldest climatic conditions that there are. And in those conditions, move away from the grease, move toward the weapon shield oil. You'll have no problems at all. That's good to minus 75 degrees. And that was tested by the United States Navy at McMurdo Station and by the Navy SEALs when uh, uh, we had FP-10 at the same time. So uh, the other thing that I want to mention too about the grease before I move on to our last subject here is that the grease is great not for, not for light machine but guns but for medium machine guns like the saws, uh, your squad automatic weapon, the M249. It's ideal for that. Uh, I mean, it, it just it keeps them rocking and rolling. And weapons that generate a high amount of heat, like medium and heavy machine guns, the Maw Deuce is another one, um, works very well in, the, in those because the heat, our dropping point of the grease is five, 575 degrees. So the heat of these weapons can actually exceed that. And, um, but the grease will keep them rocking and rolling because the grease has weapon shield in it and it's always imparting its, its attributes to it. I mean, that's why it's working for you on some of the smaller stuff too, under the right conditions, it will. I just always get kind of paranoid when people say, yeah, I'm using grease on this and grease on that. And, um, you know, my first thought is, you're shooting in a cold climate, you're real dusty, you know, just, just watch how you're using it and I think everyone there will be fine. Lastly, I want to take just a moment to draw attention to our other products over here that uh, Matt has set out. By the way, uh, come over here for a minute, Matt. I want to introduce everybody to Matt Grimm. Matt is our Director of Operation. Uh, he also is with us here on a daily basis in the office. Uh, he'll do most of the orders. He does shipping, but he's also our main marketer. Matt goes out and gets some of the big accounts for us, and that's why we pay him good money. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you, Matt. Thanks, George. The other products that Matt has set out here, just to give you an idea of our full line, you can see these products at www.steelshieldtech.com. That's steelshieldtech.com. And um, you can see our uh, episode on the Velocity Channel that we filmed a few months ago. I think it was last fall. Uh, there's quite a lot of information on our products, our specifications, and like my weapon shield, the rest of the products that we've developed, this is not one product, by the way, in a lot of different labels and bottles. You will find that it's all been tailored and designed for the industries and for the usage that it's implied. Uh, we have spray shield, which is a general lubricant 
that has some of our grease that's emulsified into a fluid because this way when you're spraying open gears and things like that it'll gather dirt and dust and form kind of a little crust but it'll hold that oil in there and under those conditions it's it's great uh, more of an industrial type application or a home use application sliding glass doors things like that this is our tool shield that's for air tools for pneumatic uh, uh, instruments that basically operate on air uh, body tools body hammers chisels things like that sanders da's a few drops of that daily it will keep your tool running forever. We guarantee it. It keeps it clean too. If you've got an air tool that's kind of plugged up, use that and it'll blow the black carbon out of it and all the gook and all the, uh, the ancient carbon that's been in there. And it actually brings dead tools back to life. And not only have I been told that, I've witnessed it. So it's that good. Then we have our strike shield. This is the king of penetration solutions. Um, you've heard of, you know, blaster, uh, pen, you know, all the different penetrating oils that you may find on the market will put them to shame, I guarantee you. There's nothing like this. This will unfreeze the worst bolts, uh, the worst corroded conditions. It will dissolve the rust. Well, I've had people uh, tell me, and actually, while I was there, go put it on bolts that they have had problems and tried everything uh as one guy told me he says i i've tried wd-40 40 times and i still can't get it off but uh it'll do it he put it on and uh, he said within five minutes he took the bolts right off but also our engine shield our transmission shield uh this is for the engine of your car your vehicle your truck anything we have truck shield too which is very very similar um, but your transmission shield, you just put it in your transmission once and you're done. Engine shield, we recommend that you put it in every oil change. You will not believe the difference. You'll get more miles per gallon, more horsepower. We guarantee that you can get five more horsepower off the top end. And that's, you can prove it on a dynamometer uh, in a heartbeat. We've got lots of dyno information that's on the website too. Our lithium shield grease, which is a bit different than our weapon shield grease. This is our industrial standard that has our additive in it that makes our other products famous. And it's used throughout industry, throughout the steel mills, the paper mill industry. And this, of course, there's a, uh, our two pound tub, or I'm sorry, our one pound tub uh, of NLGI. It's a number two of the National Lubricating Grease Institute. Everything is classified by its thickness or its NLGI number. Number two is your most common used. It is used in the automotive. In fact, this is approved for automotive use as for wheel bearings and undercarriages. Uh, this also is the same stuff. Uh, people will buy it like this and repack bearings, and I guarantee you the bearings will last forever. We also make trans uh, shield for motorcycles for your transmission and also uh, V-twin shield, which is for the engines. And... Uh, the most common question I get from people is, is it okay on a wet clutch? Absolutely. In the case of friction materials uh, in a clutch pack on a motorcycle, uh, basically the same as a transmission, it does not upset the coefficient of friction. It will actually clean the friction material side. You have a friction side that hits a metal plate and then another friction side and another metal plate. When they go into lockup, they all actually go into lockup so that your planets can move and you shift gears. It's amazing what it does without any slippage. It'll firm up your shift. It'll give you longer life. And I guarantee you, as we always have, it'll cool your transmission a minimum of 50 degrees. And heat is a transmission's worst enemy. Our V-twin shield, the one thing that works, you put it in a motorcycle, guarantee just from the friction that occurs within the motorcycle that's totally independent from the heat that you're generating in the jugs, we can cool the overall ambient temperature of your oil by 30 degrees minimum, usually 30 to 50 degrees in your, in your, uh, in your motorcycle. So, I mean, check out our products. You'll find even more out there. Um, I've just touched on a few of the attributes. I want to say one more thing about the grease. Suppressors. This stuff is amazing when you use it on suppressors or when you use it to create a wet can type uh, system. It's pretty easy too. In a suppressor, you have a rear blast chamber. 
and all you have to do is take this applicator, kind of bend this a little bit and create that bit of an angle, put this inside and just run a nice bead, get it so that yeah, you want probably about a half an inch to an inch of the grease inside that blast chamber from your uh, syringe. When you put that suppressor back on and that first shot goes through, it disperses the grease. Keep in mind that grease is a 575 degree dropping point. So if your suppressor is going to be on an M4 that you're going to be rocking and rolling, you're going to heat that up pretty quick. But if you're using it on a sidearm like a 45 ACP or a duty weapon, and basically you're carrying a wet can, you don't have to worry about it dripping out on your uniform. You don't have to worry about it leaking out all over the place. It's going to take you quite a few rounds from a single semi-automatic point of view to get that temperature in that can up to 575 degrees. Of course, everybody's seen a video, I think, of you know frying bacon on the suppressor or wrapping it and then getting out of their full auto. That's a different story. But try it. If you, um, if you are into NFA and use suppressors for your hearing protection, which um, really, I mean, that's, that's the biggest reason we have these suppressors. They save your hearing. Uh, to get out there while you're hunting or to get out there while you're target shooting, every, everybody can't get in the woods and basically put on earmuffs because you're not going to hear the game. You're not going to uh, be able to discern your situation as well uh, you know, with a good sense of hearing. But with suppressors, that's what they're designed for. So just wanted to pass that along. One more thing about the grease that I forgot to mention before. It's excellent on the suppressors and will drop the sound decibel level by anywhere between 9 to 11 dB more. So that's very significant, every 3 dB. So with that, I'll leave everybody um, with all that information today and say thanks very much and thanks for joining us here at uh, Steel Shield Technologies, Weapon Shield. George Fennell, take care.